Hello and welcome back to our Impact Your Life channel and episode six in our pregnancy series. I'm Christy Amundsen. I am a physical therapist and I'm also 25 weeks pregnant this week in my fourth pregnancy. And we are uploading each week discussing topics that are relevant to pregnant women and postpartum women. And this week we have a very common and highly requested topic, which is SI and sciatica pain. So we're first gonna review kind of where, what, what are those things? What are sciatica, what are SI pain? Where they originate from? And why do they occur more often in pregnancy? So first of all, SI refers to the sacroiliac joint. It's basically in your pelvis. So if this is looking at the back of you, here is your tailbone and here are your two pelvis bones. And where those two bones meet, there is a joint on either side on the right and left called your SI joint. Those joints are not very meant to move very much. They're meant to kind of flex and uh, move very little bit when you're shifting your weight, like when you're walking or running. Um, or changing positions. And they're also meant to shock absorb for the spine if you were to be jumping or um, during certain transitional movements. So usually pain or inflammation at this joint, it can be called SI pain, it can be called SI dysfunction, SI syn syndrome. If it's inflammation, it's called sacroiliitis. But all of that basically means that this joint is um, referring pain into the area right around this joint, which usually is kind of, um, if you have like, if you think about the dimples on your low back, that's right where that joint is. Um, so it's very, very low, kind of where your low back meets your, your buttock region. Um, they also can refer pain into your buttock region, sometimes even into the front of your hip or groin area. And, um, other times it can actually go down your leg as well. So SI joint dysfunction is a diagnosis in contrast to sciatica, which is actually more of a symptom. So sciatica refers to pain from the low back or the butt region or into the leg that is originated, originating from your sciatic nerve. So where's the sciatic nerve coming from? It comes from five different nerve roots. Nerve roots are just nerves that exit out of your spine on the side here. So those five nerve roots at the lowest, at low levels are going to come together and pass through the pelvis here and exit out, if I turn this back around, um, out the back of the pelvis. The sciatic nerve is actually the biggest, kind of fattest, longest nerve in your entire body and you have two of them, you have a right and a left. And really when they come together, that goes down the back of your leg and then behind the knee, it splits into two different nerves. So it can again, refer to pain in the low back area, in the buttock region or anywhere in the leg, but it only is referring to pain in those areas that actually is originating from that particular sciatic nerve. So, SI joint pain or SI joint dysfunction can cause sciatica, but sciatica can, also, sciatica can also be caused by a lot of other things as well. So in pregnancy, we have the placenta that is, that is uh, releasing a hormone called relaxin that makes the joints in the entire body more flexible, pliable. Um, it's to prepare you for childbirth, but in particular for your pelvis, um, it acts on this, these two SI joints, as well as that pubic joint in the, in the front, which we talked about in episode one. And it can um, make those joints more flexible. The purpose of that is to allow the baby to more easily pass through the birth canal. However, in making that, the, those joints more flexible, it makes the pelvis more unstable in general. So it can lead to a lot more pain in these areas in the SI joint, as well as if you look at when I um, move this with um, these joints back and forth, you can see the windows on either side where that, um, that nerve is exiting, your sciatic nerve is exiting, will change um, shape or size. 
So when I flex back and forth, you can see one is getting wider and one is getting shorter. So on either side, usually if you have one SI joint that's in a bad position, the other joint is also in a bad position because this is a ring. So one, one part of it can't move independently. So usually you do only get pain on one side. It's pretty seldom that you would get pain on both sides, but it does happen. Um, but it can be coming from the compression on one side or it can be coming from the widening on the other side. And then clearly the joints in your SI joints are, are in a non, what I would consider normal or neutral position, and they're being stressed as well. So sometimes you can get kind of stuck, so to speak, in one position in pregnancy, sometimes because of how the baby is lying, and, and um, sometimes because of certain things that you do all the time, um, in a certain way. And then other times it can just be just moving too much and be a lack of stability. So um, this can um, also, when you're pregnant, the baby, uh, especially later on in the third trimester, as the baby descends more into the pelvis and the baby's head um, comes to the very bottom of the uterus, it can um, kind of compress the uterus can kind of push and compress that area where that sciatic nerve is trying to exit as well. So that can cause sciatica. In addition to that, just generally, in, um, especially in the third try, but throughout pregnancy, you get kind of progressive weight gain and fluid retention in general in your entire body. And just the weight of that um, on the pelvic floor can cause compression to one or both of these sciatic areas as well. Um, you will want to try your best to avoid uh, significant um, weight gains that are over a short period of time. So you want to try to keep your weight gain as steady as you can throughout the pregnancy because it, it will happen more often if you have a sudden um, larger, more sudden weight gain. So what can we do about this to alleviate it? I'm going to go over three things to help alleviate or mitigate some of these symptoms in pregnancy or postpartum women. First, I'm gonna talk about modifying your activities and some different ways to do that. I'm also gonna talk about um, a certain support that can help um, decrease the instability in this area. And then I'm also gonna um, show you a couple exercises that can directly influence this area and give it more stability and hopefully take some of that pressure off of both the SI joint and the sciatic nerve. So let's go. Okay, so first we're gonna talk about position modifications and activity modifications. So if your sciatica or SI symptoms are more related to the weight gain, fluid retention, or late in the third try where the baby's head is kind of resting more on that nerve, and Oftentimes you won't know, so you'll want to try this, but if this doesn't help, then it probably maybe isn't quite as related to that. And if it does, then it might be. Um, that you're going to want to decrease the influence of gravity. So um, ideally, instead of in a standing up or sitting position, you would try as much as you can to lie down, whether that be on your back. If you're on your back, you're going to want to be um, on like reclined, either in a recliner or by propping up some pillows so that you're at least at a 30 degree incline. But even better than on your back is if you can lie on your side. And I would recommend whatever side is the painful side, um, I would recommend lying on the opposite side. So again, if you're getting that compression more on one side, by lying on the opposite side, it decreases the influence of gravity, pushing down into your pelvic floor, but it also um, will help to kind of shift to the opposite side. It probably, especially if it's late in the third try, doesn't necessarily mean it will move the baby's head to the other side, but it can just alleviate some of that pressure um, and all of that um, in gravity acting upon it. So again, you, you maybe won't know that, but I would try it. And if it's helpful, obviously you can do it. If it's not helpful, then it may be more likely that your SI or sciatica symptoms are more related to an instability issue or a 
kind of being stuck in a one position issue. So if that's more your problem, you will definitely want to try to um, eliminate or limit, I should say, um, how much you're shifting side to side. So normally when we walk or when we shift our weight side to side, these joints are supposed to move a little bit and flex um, when, you're, when you shift your weight side to side. So if you have a problem where the joints are just a little bit unstable and they're moving a little bit too much, you might want to limit how much you are, you know, standing on one leg like this um, or standing on the other leg shifting side to side and instead try to keep your weight a little bit more evenly distributed. If you're keeping your weight more evenly distributed, you want to try to keep your weight more toward your heels instead of the balls of your feet. If I shift my weight to the balls of my feet, my back kind of arches more and it puts more compression back here versus if I go to my heels, it takes a little bit of that arch out of my back and takes some of the pressure off. Again, you wanna to try to lim um, limit how much your back is arching like this. The pregnancy and the weight of the baby is already pulling you that direction, which is why back pain is so common, which we've already talked about in episode three. Um, but you wanna to try to um, keep your, um, limit the amount of large amount of arch that your back is in because that again will put more pressure on that area and it also puts more pressure on your SI area as well. So trying to keep your weight evenly distributed left to right and also kind of if you are keeping it more evenly distributed keeping it back more on your heels so that it doesn't aggravate up higher in your back. The other thing is is when you're walking or taking steps trying to uh, shorten your stride or step length a little bit. So if I take a large step, it can kind of stress those joints a little bit more than if I were to take just a tiny bit shorter step. I wouldn't expect you to you know, walk like this, but trying to <laughs> take a little bit shorter step can sometimes limit how much those joints are kind of being stressed. So the other thing that's big is getting in and out of the car or getting up and down from a chair. When you get up and down from a chair, again, trying to keep your weight pretty even when you push yourself up, as opposed to, you know, staggering your feet and going up like this. A car, getting it out of the car or in the car is a big culprit for that because most of us are just in a hurry. So we take one step out of the car and kind of shimmy like this and stand up and bring the other foot out. That does stress your um, pelvic ring quite a lot both your pubic symphysis and um, the joints in your SI. So if you're having pain already in those areas, it's a better idea to try to swivel yourself out. So if I'm sitting in the car and here's my door and I open my door, I'm going to try to swivel my feet all the way to the side first and then use both feet to stand up. And then in reverse, when you're getting into the car, um, facing away from the seat, sitting down first and then swiveling in. If the swivel part is uncomfortable for you, um, it helps if you can uh, like sit on a garbage bag, um, any kind of a plastic bag, it can help you kind of slide a little bit easier on the seat. The other thing is when you're getting up and down from the floor, typically when you get up and down from the floor, we kind of stagger our feet like this and lower down with one leg or the other leg. So we're splitting our legs apart like that. Again, that can kind of really stress that pelvic area. So when you get up and down from the floor, trying to find a surface that's stable, such as your couch or chair, um, as long as it doesn't really move when you, um, a lot if you were to put, push into it and trying to use that to lean forward on and walking your feet out and then just trying to lower yourself down equally on your uh, with both legs and then obviously in reverse you would uh, push and you can push with your hands or you could put your elbows down and push and again you're trying to push so that your butt goes straight up in the air um, when you push like this and then you would walk your feet kind of small steps in until you can stand up. So that avoids kind of that really, um, not only splitting your legs apart, but also that in un really uneven distribution of your weight as you push yourself up through your body weight. All right, 
So hopefully incorporating some of those things can help alleviate some of your symptoms. Now I wanna talk about um, a certain support that can really help with your um, stability in this area. So we'll do that next. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about a certain support that can really help uh, stabilize your pelvis area, in particular your SI joints. And this is more to help if you have an instability problem. So if you're kind of, your body is stuck in one position, compressing it in that position may not help. However, if it's more of an issue where the movement is a little bit too much, then this um, support uh, may help you. Again, you're probably not gonna know what, which one it is for you, so you're just gonna have to try things. If you don't want to buy one of these supports to try and then have it not work, you could try having somebody like your partner or a friend come behind you and just take their hands and compress. You're pushing in on your pelvic bones. Um, and if that feels like it kind of relieves some of your pain in your SI region or down your leg, then this support may help you. Um, so I'm gonna show you an SI belt. Um, an SI belt that I'm gonna show you is, the, the one that I'm gonna show you is actually not a maternity belt. And, I'm, um, and I am gonna show you that for a reason, which I will explain in a second. The particular belt that we use is the Sorola belt. I will link it below in the comments. Um, we are not endorsing this product by any means. Um, we do not get any kickbacks from it. It's just the, the, the product that we happen to have pretty good success with with our patients. So that is why we carry it. Um, but there are many on the market and there are um, non maternity versions and also maternity SI belts as well. Um, so this, um, this does have sizing on the back. I'll bring this up for you. So it, the sizing goes by, um, obviously this is a non-maternity product, so it goes by um, what, your hip, uh, what your hip circumference would be right now during pregnancy. Um, and this SI belt, This is gonna be a little bit big on me, actually, that we don't have the size that I would normally be. So, um, so you're gonna, the belt, this belt in particular has Velcro around, and then it has two Velcro straps. When I put this on, I'm gonna take these straps and I'm going to loosen them. So I just release them so they're not pulling at all. And the very back should have a seam Depending on the product, it might have the emblem in the back or something, but something's gonna indicate the very center of the back. And then there should be um, um, an emblem somewhere that tells you which way is up. So their emblem is in the front. So I'm gonna turn this around. I would want the seam to be a very, in the very center of my low back, very low, kind of over my tailbone. And then I'm going to put the belt around me and I'm gonna to try to keep that seam in the center now this belt does not, this is part of the reason we like this belt, it does not, the belt itself going around does not stretch. Um, the actual extra bands here do. Um, so I'm going to put this on, again it goes very low, which is why a lot of times with pregnancy you can still get away with doing a non-maternity product for this. But you wanna try to get it tight. You can get help if you want. Normally, like I said, this is a little big on me, so normally it wouldn't go quite all the way over here. It would go more toward the middle. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unvelcro these straps, and it is helpful if you can to pull them both at the same time. That way you get even pull on your pelvis. Um, if you can't do that, doing them one at a time is, you can do that. You just wanna try to make sure that the pull is symmetrical or get somebody to help you. But you wanna um, put your feet apart and then um, you're gonna pull out as far as you can, and then they're gonna come around and Velcro in here. And basically what it's meant to do is it's really meant to compress through your pelvis here. The biggest mistake, or one of the biggest mistakes with SI belts is people tend to put them too high. Um, and you should be able, or too low. So you should be able to comfortably sit so it's too low if I sit and it's like cutting into my hip here. 
and it's too high if it's really cutting into my belly. Um, you want it to be, if you feel your pelvis, your pelvis bones here, like this is the top of my pelvis bone. So I want to be below that on both sides, about the same distance on both sides. I also want to be above where my hip, like if I kick my hip out to the side and this bone that's lower, that's my hip bone, I want to be above that bone. So kind of right in between, basically on this model, it would be, um, if this is my hip socket, the, the belt would go right here on both sides. And again, the, the point of it is to compress. So it really helps with stability. And you may not need to wear it when you sit. So if it is uncomfortable, either from your belly or your hip standpoint, when you sit, you could take it off when you sit because the, the most, most of the time it's going to help you is when you're up moving around and shifting, you have to walk and shift your weight, which is where those joints are going to move more. So obviously limiting or compressing at that area won't allow them to move or be un, quite as unstable. I like the non-maternity product because most of the time maternity products will have a piece in the front that has a pad and oftentimes they'll be elastic in the front, which can be helpful if you're carrying really low or you're really far along um, so that it's not compressing in here um, too much. However, what you lose with that is by having an elastic in that, you don't get as much compression. It will often just kind of stretch. So I do like using a non-maternity product for these if people can, if it still feels good to them, uh, because you get you still get that compression. There are a lot of SI joints uh, belts on the market, but like I said, the reason part of the reason we like this one is because the base belt is really um, it doesn't stretch. So if you uh, purchase a belt maybe online and you weren't able to see it, and it is really elasticy. This part of the belt is. Um, it probably isn't going to be as quite as beneficial as if it as if if it were more tough like this. So, like I said, if this um, if you find that this is helpful, obviously you can wear it during your pregnancy um, and your postpartum period until that pain kind of subsides. I would not recommend wearing it 100% of the time. I would recommend taking it on and off throughout your day with the activities that tend to be more bothersome. Usually things that you're up and about, moving up, moving from sitting to standing or um, walking around. All right, so now we're gonna go over a couple exercises that can really target that pelvic ring and help stabilize it to help with instability, as well as if you're kind of stuck in one position, potentially help gently mobilize it in the other direction. Okay, so I'm gonna go over two different exercises that can help stabilize and possibly alleviate the pain in your SI region or sciatic, sciatica. Um, keep in mind that, again, sometimes this problem is being caused by instability, in which case doing both sides might feel good to you, in which case you would do both sides if they both feel good. However, if your problem is more related to you, your pelvis being a little bit stuck in one position or the other, then you may find that one side feels good and alleviates your symptoms or reduces them, and then the other side may make them worse. Um, and that would make sense because, again, if you're, if you're doing them on one side, what we're gonna be targeting is your glute muscle, your glute max muscle. Your glute max muscle is a very large muscle that goes across here, across the SI joint, and can help stabilize that joint really well. So again, it can help with instability, but it also can help if you have this um, problem where you're having a dysfunction. Again, you have one side that's really narrow and one side that's wider here. So if I do my glute max on this side, it can help kind of close this window and improve that. However, if I were to be doing it over here when this side is already compressed, it may make it worse. So the bottom line is, again, you're not gonna know, so you're gonna try both sides. If one side feels good to you, do that side only. And the other side doesn't, obviously do the side that feels good. If both sides do not feel good or cause your symptoms to worsen, then you would do neither. Okay, so 
The first one I'm going to show you is the is it easier one to do if you're like at work, at your computer, sitting position. It doesn't involve lying down. Um, and what you're going to do is you're going to sit in a chair and you want your legs to be flat on the floor, your feet to be flat on the floor and your thighs to be relatively parallel to the floor. So if you are someone who is in a higher chair or happen to be just shorter, you may need to prop your feet up on something because you would not want to be sitting on the edge of the chair like this. And you also don't want your knees sloping down like this. So make sure that you, they can be flat and if they can't, then put something underneath them so they can. And then what you're going to do is take your lower back and kind of push it into the back of the chair. So again, you want a firm chair when you're doing this. If your chair is just reclining or if it's the couch and it's really squishy, then um, I would pick, choose a firmer chair. So as I push my back in, what that looks like is I'm trying to round it like this. Again, I have a back on my chair, so my back is not gonna round that much. But by doing that, I'm gonna engage my abdominals a little bit. And so I'm pushing back, and then I'm going to take one leg and put it up, bring my um, ankle up to the opposite knee. I'm gonna take my hands, clasp them around this knee, or I could just hang on to my knee either way. Um, and whatever knee I'm doing, so in this case, I'm doing my left leg, I'm going to shift my weight to the opposite side. So again, I'm gonna push my back into the chair. I'm gonna shift my weight a little bit to the right. And now I'm going to take my knee and it's like I'm trying to push it this way against my hands. It's not going to move much, but you should feel your uh, butt muscle on the left turn on. When you're doing that, I don't want you to lean to the left. So remember, you kind of shifted your weight over to the opposite leg and now you're going to push. And you're gonna hold it and breathe. You don't have to push really hard. You wanna push enough that you can feel the muscle turn on. You're gonna hold it about four or five breaths, really nice and slow, and then just relax. And again, you're gonna try the other side. If it feels good, you'll do both. If only one side feels good, you'll do the side that feels good. If neither side feels good, you will do neither. <laughs> again, so I'm gonna cross up here. I'm gonna push my back into the chair. I'm gonna shift my weight to the opposite leg and I'm going to clasp behind here and push. And I'm gonna breathe. And I might feel a little bit of um, ab, but the most of what I should feel is the leg that's up here that butt muscle working. So I'm gonna just show you what it looks like from the front here, so you can see the weight shift. So again, I'm gonna push my back in, cross up. I'm going to shift my weight to the opposite side of the leg that is bent, and then I'm, going, I'm trying to push out. And the other side would look like this. Again, push my back into the chair, shift to one side, push out. I really like this one because, you can, again, you can do it just in the middle of your day um, when you're sitting. If you're getting some of those symptoms, try it. Sometimes if you have some instability, again, if you find that one side feels good, the other side doesn't, it, won't, it sometimes will change. So. Maybe last night it felt really good to do the right side, not so good to do the left. That doesn't mean that tomorrow it'll be exactly the same. You can try it that way. As long as it still feels good, do it. But certainly try both because, again, you could have shifted. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one you're going to do lying down. The only props that you're going to need are going to be pillows to lie on your side. And you need something to prop up your leg here. So it basically you want, if you look at the, the width of your hips and you were to turn on your side, that's how high you would want your surface to be. I'm just using this ramp because we have it at the clinic here, but a lot of times what I'll tell people is just grab the stack of folded towels in your, in your cupboard. And um, if you want it about this high, you might want to get it a little higher again, because the towels will compress a little bit, but um, you can literally take it out and put it there and use that. 
could also use a foam roller with a towel on top. Again, it just has to be a, around the height of your hip so that when you lie down, your knee will rest on it and your knee will be about the same height as your hip. You don't want your knee really high or really low. It does not, I know this um, prop happens to kind of support my whole leg all the way back. You could have that if that feels better to you, but you don't have to. The, the prop can be just under your knee. So my foot is going to go on the wall behind me. So I do need to be lying where I have a surface behind me that is relatively stable if I push into it, that it won't just slide away. So the side of the couch works or just a wall works. And then I wanna be in a relatively straight line here um, when I lie down, if I can. So my hips are kind of stacked one on top of the other, as are my shoulders as much as I can. And then when I'm lying here in as straight of a line as I can with my foot flat on the wall back here at about a 90 degree angle, I also want my back to not be very arched. So you will have to um, take your, your pelvis and you're gonna turn it kind of under or tuck your butt under you like you are, uh, if you were to have a belt on, it's like you're bringing your belt up, belt buckle toward your face or bringing your baby up toward your face. When you do that, you don't wanna do it so much that you roll backward or your foot comes um, off the wall. When I do that also, I want my chest up here and my ribs to be kind of tucked in and back. I don't want them to be like this because that would make my back really arched. So again, I'm gonna tuck this in. I'm gonna tuck my butt under. I want my foot to stay flat back there. So I'm gonna um, relax in this position and I'm gonna take this side, your top side. Usually when you lie here, if I just relax, my hips are stacked one on top of the other this way. But I don't know if you can tell, but my bottom hip is a little bit closer toward um, this prop than my top hip is. And I'd like them to be stacked. So what I'm gonna take this hip and I'm gonna reach it down a little bit so that they're stacked. When I reach it down, I don't wanna arch my back when I do that. So I'm gonna reach it down a little bit by keeping my ribs in and tucking my butt. And when I do that, now I'm going to push my foot back into the wall like I am kicking into the wall. As I do that, I'm also going to push my knee down into this towel or stack of towels or prop. Again, when I push down, I wouldn't want it to compress so much that my knee would drop really low. So I'm pushing back and down. And I'm holding and I'm breathing. And after I hold that, I'm going to relax. Again, I would hold it for about five breaths or four, four or five breaths if you breathe slowly. And then after I rest, I'm gonna do the same exact thing, but this time I'm gonna lift my knee up. So I'm going to pull my ribs in, tuck my butt under, take this top hip, reach it a little bit long that way, push back into the wall like I'm trying to kick, but make sure when you do that, you're using your glute, your butt muscle to kick back and not arching your back to kick back. And then I'm going to lift it up just a little bit. It does not need to come up really wide and that might stress your pelvis if you try to lift it really high. Um, if you find, again, left to right, whichever one um, is more comfortable, but you also may find that it's more comfortable for you to push down, but it kind of hurts to lift up, then just keep pushing down. If you can do both, you will want to do both. You'll want to push down first, followed by lifting up. Again, when you push down, you should be feeling, because you're pushing back, you should be feeling that butt on the top, but also a little of your inner thigh. When I lift up, it should intensify in my butt. So again, you'll do both if you can, if it's comfortable, but if one side or if one direction is more comfortable than the other, then just do that direction. And then again, you'd flip to the other side and do the other way. So. Hopefully, some of these things that you can try in this video will help alleviate your discomfort related to SI pain, dis dysfunction, and or sciatica. So if you found anything in this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to keep getting notifications. Of, and we'll see you next week.
Thank you.